Okay, this is the second shield versus live steel test. Today we're going to be testing the poplar shield versus the arming sword from last time with the addition of a bearded viking axe, a couple of hunting arrows, and some crossbow bolts. The audio is a little poor for the first couple of minutes of the video, but hang in there, it'll get better shortly. All right, let's get into it, and thanks for watching. We're at Daily Reach for the second shield test, and you know, we went through the balsa one, learned a bunch of things about it, and I think we pretty much maxed out what we learned from that shield. So, this one's Poplar, which was very popular, and uh, I thought we'd give it a try and chop it this one up too. No. What kind of leather's on the front? Right, so on the front here, I've made four different surfaces, so I'd like it if you guys can get impacts on each quadrant. You see there's a line right here, and then a line right here, and basically, which side here? It's hard to tell. This side is two thicknesses of hide, and this is one thickness of hide, and this is with a layer of the glue coating, and this is a layer of the valve. Okay. So it's effectively four different uh, thicknesses of surface. So this is a shark right around 13, 14th century army blade? Yeah. It's a very good blade. It's a simple cruciform hilt sword. Edged all the way down, sharp point, wheel pommel. This is the same sword we used last time. I'm going to be using a Shinai in my hand because John is lightly armed. And what I want to do is when his blade hits the shield, I want to see how much time it gives me to counter strike right. while he's recovering his blade. Right. And with a Shinai, he doesn't need to arm up a lot so he'll have speed and be unarmored okay right and one of the things that we found when we were doing this the last uh, test was that the blade went very deep into the wood hung up his sword a lot so we're going to be comparing and you and i talked about uh, sticky versus grabby shields and that you know sticky being the sword gets stuck in there grabby means sort of grabs it and or slows it down. Inter interrupts your flow and then perhaps gravity is better than sticky. So that's one of the things we're going to be comparing. Another thing I wanted to mention, in the last test you did a few thrusts, the sword went all the way through the shield, although you know not enough to actually go through the other person. I want to try at least getting some thrusts in on this because to, to verify that Height of wood matters as well. You know, I, I suspect this will stop penetration entirely. So absolutely, I'm very interested to find out. And again, we've got four surfaces too. So, and as we're moving, I'm going to be using my shield to move it around and redirect the strike of the blow, also giving myself time to counter strike. So that will help hit all four of the. Quadrants, yes, as well. All right, we'll get all set up. Right. So for the test, what we're going to do is, I've got the shield. John has the sharp sword, and as I say, I'm going to be using this to test what kind of openings I can get with the shield catching his sword, whether it's grabbing it or slowing it down. I'm wearing the halberd. Because one of the things that we're doing here is John is really trying to hit me. He is not attacking the shield, he is attacking me. We're genuinely trying to test how these shields function in a old fighting system, how they were used back in the day when this was a life and death scenario. So I can't give that test if my strikes are just um, aimed at the edge of the shield here, which I might use on another person. So, I have to genuinely aim at the opponent who's behind me here. So, we have to protect you here on just in case. Alright, ready?
As we can see, wow, we've got, it's actually easier to look at the back, I think. Yeah. We've got a nice dramatic side angle cut here. It looks like you halfway cut a scoop out of the shield. I think what happened on there is he cut down this way and I turned it. Uh, yep. So is. you actually maybe turned into As he was cutting. Okay, and then here's another one. Um, these, one thing I've noticed is that well, yeah, no, here's another one and another. You got some good thrusts. But none of these are as deep as the ones on the balsa shield. So let's take a look at thrusts. Here's one. Yeah, yeah, there's. Did it go through? So this is the thickest. This is the thickest quarter right here. And it did not go through. Right. And then this is the. Two, we, did, we only got one in this quarter, it looks like, right? And how did that yeah, do? That did go through. But barely. Barely. And then here, there's one. And we see it, I see an indent in the fabric, in material in the back here, but nothing, that's it. I and don't see a complete contraction. A couple smaller ones right here. Finger sized. I mean, I, I, you could just wipe glue over that and it's gone. We, we carved a complete notch out, so. But I'm nice, I, uh, I saved it for you. Naturally, I was gonna say, naturally in a combat situation, you would go back to the battlefield to find this little. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good one there. We have two right here. I don't know if yeah. you can see that one, but there's oh. one that went on the top of the handle as well. Uh, I was actually wondering what would happen if the sword, if you actually went right into the tip of the snake's head. I did that on purpose. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can see it did. And yeah, that definitely put a stop to the sword. And the oak didn't split. Um, oh, here's another one. Oh boy, that's lucky. Oh. Hey, look at this, we, we almost hit a nail, which I'm sure would have yeah. upset And that's from this cut right here. Right, yeah, so the blade came right there. And just the tip was behind it. I didn't um, realize I was volunteering you to get the snot whacked out of you. I love it. It's only you know. I love it, yeah. I love it. That's great. So this cut here um, is interesting because it doesn't go through at all. It's just a surface cut. Um, so yeah, definitely poplar is an improvement over balsa wood. Yeah. Big no surprise that our cuts are about half as deep and that the thrusts hardly even went through at all. So I think if you did a shield with one horsehide cover, that would be enough. So yeah, definitely we got better improvement on the... Uh, on the poplar. On the on the thrusts. Yeah. Because that that's that stopped yeah. that. Talking from my point of view and again coming in with these attacks here and the thrusts, I actually felt the jar of the impact all the way through my arm. Mm. On the, the balsa. When I stab, I I I might as well have just been pushing it into some tissue paper or something. Yeah. But when I came into these here, I could actually feel the impact and if we go back through the video uh -huh. um, what we're gonna see is we're actually gonna watch the blade because I saw it. we're gonna see the blade bow I saw on a lot impact mm, of nice as too. opposed to just punching in and staying very rigid yeah even if it didn't go very deep this yeah. year it pushed back against my, yeah. my blade my yeah. back there I was thinking about the times you chopped the balsa and it was just sort of the blade ran out of energy as it went through instead of just thunk. Yeah, you know? yeah. And this here, this when I cut into the light of these here, this skittered. I, I, I slowed down majorly, but I didn't. There's a few of these deep ones where we're looking at. It only um, stuck twice. Maybe it only three times. stuck twice, maybe three times, um, mm -hmm. which was fantastic, fascinating on my point of view in having actually somebody returning an attack at me, mm -hmm. um, as Sir did. Um, because it's how do I get it back? How do I get my sword back in play here yeah, right now? Oh yeah, we're gonna have one by the way right there. You threw the the, the boss in the way of me, sweet. <laughs>
Um, so when you and I talked, you were saying that you felt like the sword becoming embedded in the shield was actually not an advantage to the shield holder because it because then they have your shield too. Right. So did you find that this was better? With the, with the poplar, when there was the stripes that stuck, because it didn't go as deep, mm -hmm. I twisted it off. And his act of trying to remove the blade from the shield mm -hmm. put more twist in his body, mm -hmm. giving me the opportunity to hit him two or three times mm -hmm. instead of just once. The fact that it wasn't sticking as deep gave me more opportunities to release his sword so I could get my shield out of the way so I could make my strike. So we hypothesized that it would be an improvement yeah. and that turned out to be the case. And it was. Okay, cool. Cool. I was, I've been curious about that, so that's great. I think we're actually going to go ahead and pull in a Viking hand axe into this one. So the blade here, uh -huh. not a razor edge on these things here, but with that nice shape right there that we see in a good beard, it's not meant to get stuck into a target. This one was with the point of the axe. Mm -hmm. This one was with the full blade of the axe. Not as much penetration, right. yeah. Couple good chops there. Now I saw, did you hit the boss? Is your hand okay? Oh, yeah. yeah, how is your hand? Your hand's all right? Ah. Okay. Whenever you're playing with some fun stuff there and everything, oh, you're, yeah, you, you can get some see cool the cut mark right there. Yep. So imagine this with now that's sharp a sword. sword. Yeah, that's, that's can, I don't have a hand. I don't yeah. have a hand anymore. You can see why with these swords, uh, it'll do the job. Yeah. Here we go. So oh, that that mm -hmm. axe busted the go. handle. I did not. Yeah, I meant to catch it. Right, no. right here, and right here. Yeah. I threw here. Yeah. I didn't. Yep. Get it down. Very if we're talking about that axe and everything, there's a couple of fun bits that I found. We can see that. I love that gouge right there. As we can see here, that gouge is just from yeah. that tip right there curving on it. So I'm and actually. That's, that's what broke the handle. Yeah. I'm sure of it. So when I come in with a sword cut here and descending here, I'm just going to simply swing. Let's watch that arc of that sword coming in to the target here. Okay. We can see where all that's coming. It's going to end in that extension line. Where's that coming? It's coming here to the edge because I'm trying to reach, I'm going to be kind here right now, the person behind me. Okay. Now, if I get that same swinging arc here, once I hit that full extension, I'm actually down there a little bit lower. So I'm not reaching the same space here. There is no way I want to stand here when he swings at me because my shield is going to drive into my face. So the only thing I can do when he's swinging at me like that is step into it. And there we're having that drive into the flat shield here. So these are the arrows we're going to shoot at it next. Great. Okay. Oh, this is the one you were telling me you were not expecting to survive. No, I do not expect these to survive, which is fine, because I really don't want them here. These are what I'm going to shoot at the shield with a 45-pound longbow. And let's see how it does against this shield. And I will tell you, firing a 45-pound bow in 35 pounds of male armor is challenging. Ready? Close, very close, and that, yeah, that's not that's not great either, is it? No, that would make me unhappy. So we see this in the movies all the time. They're under their shields, arrows come in, they stand up. Ah! I bet that was satisfying. <laughs> that was <it. laughs> yeah, so this crossbow is 
probably more along the lines of something around the 1400s, much later than, you know, a Viking shield, but it's got bobkin heads on it, mm. and I figured, Fantastic. why not? That might be fun. No, I'd like to see what bobkin heads do. no penetration at all. So that's a 45 pound crossbow mm -hmm. and the recurve was a 45 pound. Yep. So theoretically the difference should be in the shape of the head. Exactly, yeah. Right? Hmm. And I think these are closer to the style of the Viking era. Yeah. I'm gonna say that it's because this thing is so uh, so thick. flared yeah. that you know it's like trying to put a sword through it versus a hatchet. With the boss, we, we got an impact, so you can see it it smashed the tip down pretty good, but it did nothing basically to the shield boss. Um, virtually no penetration, so the broadhead seemed to have gotten more penetration than than these. But uh, yeah, very informative. Thank you for, we managed to tag all four of my surfaces. It hardly went in at all. Yeah. And this one, it sunk in deeply. So it doesn't seem that there's a lot of correlation is between thickness of the surface and penetration. So that's very interesting. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Stay tuned for more videos on shields as we show you how to use the shield boss as a fighting weapon, other techniques in shield construction, and a wide variety of medieval era, migration era, arts, handicrafts, and skills. Hit that subscribe button for more live steel fighting videos and to follow me on other adventures. Thanks for watching.